Hello, everybody. One second. Okay, how's it going, everybody? I think I'm live. Actually, I have no idea. Um, one sec. Okay, one sec. Let me check up on YouTube to see if we are live. Okay. So, oh, we are live. We got 17 people watching. Awesome. So I'm going to share this in our Facebook group, which you have not joined the Facebook group yet. Probably should. Um, there will be a link towards the very bottom of the call. Um, but yeah, so feel free to join the Facebook group. And if you can hear me, oh, I can hear myself. Um, maybe I need to lower my volume. Okay, so if you can hear me, feel free to put in the chat box um, with your name and also where you are from, so I can understand that you can hear me. Um, I'm just gonna post on the Facebook group real quick. We are live. So I'm probably gonna be about 30 to 45 minutes. I think I said that last time, it ended up being like 50 minutes or I don't know. But um, yeah, so feel free to put in the chat box right now. I have the questions on my left-hand side over here. Um, so yo, Amanda said you just bought my course. Awesome, you are live, I am live. Yep, so. <clears throat> had a pretty busy um, morning today, and this is kind of a reason why I'm doing the topic of this live call, because this morning I started off the call, or started off my day, um, doing a call with a student, you know, it was a testimonial call, basically, and he was talking about how, I mean, he had some pretty good success at the start, he had like 3,000 sales in the very first, like, 40 days, and he found a supplier through a trade show, I was like, oh, might be a good idea to do a live stream on a trade show kind of preparation for it okay so what I'll basically be doing in this call is we're gonna go over uh, preparing for a trade show and we probably can take like 10 to 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes to go over this topic and then after that we'll do a live Q&A um, towards the end answering questions about trade shows um, and any other questions you do have okay so I'm gonna make sure to put in the chat box to make sure that I am working right now awesome all right awesome we got a bunch of people here cool yo awesome so we will get going right now into this. All right, so let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so again, this is all about preparing for a trade show as an Amazon seller. If you are watching this recorded, which this is live right now, um, watching, there will be a replay of this. YouTube automatically like uploads it, like I think like an hour or two later. But um, first, let's kind of go over what is a trade show, and let me move myself out of here. Probably just move myself right there. So if you're not sure what a trade show is, trade show is simply business to business. Um, it's 100% basically where retailers are connecting with suppliers and vendors and everything on those lines. It's basically people just buying goods um, and selling goods to each other. So retailers are connecting with vendors, vendors are uh, selling to retailers, and that's it. Now at a trade show, you can go make orders right then and there. Um, I have had made orders at trade shows and usually they give you like a discount on some products and everything like that for sure. Um, but the biggest like purpose for it is like starting the relationships um, to keep going. Okay, so that's kind of that process. However, um, what's it called? For example, there was a vendor that I didn't really work with. Um, they weren't really too specified for online retailers that much. Uh, I knew they had some online retailers, but it was a balloon company, and at the trade show they did. $10,000 in sales and keep in mind it, it cost them basically $10,000 to like literally set up a booth there and to get all their employees there it, They basically didn't make any money at the trade show However, that $10,000 they did in sales at the trade show from those clients basically turned into a half a million dollars throughout the year So there's benefits to trade shows for sure um, But we're gonna go over the benefits later as well And actually we're gonna go over the benefits right now. So I would say the biggest benefits for a trade show is one, building the long-term relationships. And when you're going to a trade show, that's where people actually want business. Um, that's actually a big thing people don't understand when they're getting suppliers is you need to be looking in the aspect of where people, like, where suppliers want business, okay? Because if you, try to, if you find a supplier on the number one page of Google, they're not really wanting that business, um, for sure. I know that might not make any sense, but um, yeah, and I've have found, I would say, 50% of my suppliers offline, which part of that is trade shows, not all of it for sure is trade shows, um, but half of it has been offline. Now, the information I know today, I probably would not have found half of my suppliers offline because there's so many stuff you can actually do everything online now, 
Um, but that's some benefits of the trade show. But kind of some short-term reasonings for trade shows is you can get better deals. Um, so, I mean, again, vendors really, like, it's really, really important for them to make deals there. Um, so they will willing to go kind of above and beyond to go cut a deal for you because they understand if they make a good deal with you today and you're happy about it, you get a good deal, you sell the units, um, they understand that you're probably going to be reordering from them after and after and after. Just like, like talking about the balloon company I was telling you about uh, before is they simply did $10,000 in sales, basically broke even, but the rest of the year that produced half a million for them, which I don't know whatever profits that was for them. But also, the good thing about this as well is you can meet people face to face. Um, so, and again, you don't have to go to trade shows. If they, if I knew the information I knew today, I would not have found half of my suppliers offline, which does not mean just trade shows. It's maybe like 20% of my suppliers have been bound from trade shows. Um, but you don't have to do this. However, when you meet people face to face, they really um, kind of understand that, oh, you're not just a person emailing me out of the blue and not just some random person that just wants to get products and doesn't really care too much about your business. If you go to a trade show, like they're, you're not gonna have to go provide, oh, this is what I did last year. They're gonna understand if you're at a trade show, you mean business and that you simply, um, like, I don't know, like it's, it's, they understand that you're a serious person pretty much. And even if you're not a serious person, if you're at a trade show, they're like, okay, they understand that you're better than most people, I guess, if that makes sense, okay? <clears throat> but again, this is not the only place where to find suppliers. I've found half of my suppliers offline, which maybe 20% of those have been from trade shows. But I mean, you can do all of this stuff online for now. Um, but some decent trade shows to go through. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because the ASD trade show is in March, which is relatively soon. Um, I know there's a few people in our Facebook group that are going to go to there. Um, I'm probably going to meet some people there. But that's a decent trade show now. Do keep in mind is not every trade show is created equally. Um, some are niche related and specific towards a category. So there might be just a, or an industry, there might just be a toy trade show and then there might be a trade show that's just everything. ASD is pretty much just everything. So the good thing and bad thing about that is majority of the vendors there are just gonna be complete junk and it's gonna be like people who are just uh, like, generic products i mean i remember the asd trade show last year you <laughs> there's like suppliers there selling like a solar eclipse glasses and everything which isn't a bad thing it's just you have pretty much everything called that um i actually do like trade shows where they're more niche specific um sometimes they can be hit or miss because if they're way way too specific uh to an industry then it's like there's no point that's why i always like to do my research and preparing beforehand so like what i'm telling you in this video okay and then you can also just google uh, trade show in blank. Okay, so now I uh, kind of go over an example of that real quick. So, um, like here, I just simply search re uh, retail trade show in. Um, dude, I think I did retail trade show in Utah um, because I'll actually be going to Salt Lake City in what's today? I don't know, in like two weeks or something like that. But with this, um, it's a outdoor retailer winter market. Um, and when you go to the trade show, I mean, you can just go hit register and you can actually see here, you can actually get the list of vendors. So if I open up that, um, that actually give you the list of vendors. Not every trade show is like that. They usually have you sign up first and then you get the vendors. Um, but you can see, click on one of the vendors. That load a little bit and you can see all these people. So now what I'm going to do is simply tell you how to prepare for that, okay? Because, I mean, you can go search every single one of these companies, but kind of tell you how to prepare for that, okay? So what are we going to do now? Let's go back into here. Okay, so when you're preparing online for a trade show, there's there's differences between preparing online and offline because you can go utilize that trade show and you don't actually have to physically go to it. Um, I don't go to, physically don't go to every trade show. It depends on the trade shows, okay? Um, yeah, so now... When you're preparing online, what you basically need is you need your business set up. So you can need your reseller's permit if you're buying from U.S. companies that have brand name products. Um, you're going to probably want an email contacting script so you can just go copy and paste. And what you could do, depending on the size of the trade show, right? If the trade show has literally over thousands of vendors, it depends how serious you are. I mean, you can maybe reach out to get a virtual assistant, which a virtual assistant is basically just where you could go outsource work to other countries where they have cheaper labor. Um, for example, you can go 
to onlinejobs.ph, find people in the Philippines to pay them for a couple bucks an hour. Um, so that's something you could do for sure. Um, but if it's a smaller trade show, like under like a few hundred vendors, then you could just have make sure your business is set up and just contact the vendors yourself. <laughs> okay. And when you're preparing online, what you should do is you should obtain the list of vendors first. Okay. So make sure to get the list of vendors first and probably register for each vendor. Okay. For example, right. I mean, this company right here, life straw, I'm just clicking on a random person. Um, let's see if I can find their website. Yeah. And then I would want to see if I can find some type of like register link or something like that. Okay. They make contaminated water safe. Um, let's see, I would try just try to find anywhere. It says contact us contact and then I'll either contact them and hopefully that I, uh, they respond back. Um, when I'm coming to deal or contact them, make sure I get an account set up with them and just go from there. Okay. Um, and get, get a list of products from each vendor as well. That's going to be important because if you get a list of products, um, then you can go research those products beforehand. Well, actually not really beforehand because you're going online <coughs> and then you can, <coughs> sorry, still a little sick. You can uh, simply see if they have good products and then you can attempt to place an order. And when you go place an order, maybe mention about how you're going to the trade show or that you might be at the trade show to see if you can get like a trade show discount. That's something you could do for sure. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So preparing offline, it's going to be a little different because you're actually physically going to the place. Um, but what you're going to need, it's the same thing pretty much. Um, besides, you're going to need your business set up for sure. But you need a lots, of, lots of business cards. Um, if there's a thousand vendors there, I mean, you're probably only going to contact like 200. So have like 400 business cards. Um, but that's, that's important because you don't want to run out. Um, you're going to be collecting a bunch. So whenever you collect one, you want to give one out as well. Um, so that's going to be important. Um, but then also have good shoes. I know that might seem funny, but like at a trade trade, you're going to be walking around a lot. So um, that's something you're for sure going to need. Okay. And when you're preparing online, you should do the product. One, you should be able to go find the suppliers first, get in contact with them. And the ones that don't have brand name products, you can just leave out, but make sure to get a list of their products and scan the products beforehand. The reason why you want to do that is not necessarily not because you're actually going to order those products. You might, but just to see if they're decent, if they have any decent products and that's probably a supplier you want to go pursue or a vendor you want to go pursue. Um, so that's that. Okay. So then when you're actually at the trade show, ready to go talk to the vendors that you actually want to go pursue, because maybe you scan their products and you realize the products are good or decent and you're like, okay, if they have decent products on this spreadsheet, they might have decent products at the trade show or throughout the rest of the year. Um, <clears throat> then you want to go talk to them. However, if it's your first time going to a trade show, I recommend not talking to them first. I recommend talking to people you do not care about first. Um, when I was, um, went to the AC trade show in August, there was one, and this is literally right when I started like coaching people. Um, like I didn't even have a course at this point. I was basically just working with him, just like kind of giving him lessons. Um, but he was at the trade show and I basically told him like, cause he like, he first just talked to a bunch of people and he had no idea what to do. He just went up to them. and was like, Hey, hi, my name is whatever. And can I have some products. And he just had no idea what to do. I was like, okay, go to talk to people you do not care about first. They'll start to ask you questions and then you probably get more comfortable. And he did that. And then by the end of the trade show, he felt like he was a professional and asking every single question he knew to man. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of why I just talk about that. And then also make sure to write down everything you do. <clears throat> now, this could just be a personal thing because whenever I go to trade shows, I just like, you're meeting so many people, you're meeting so many vendors that, and you say, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go check your products tonight. Yeah, for sure. I'll, 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 eat, I'll follow up with an email with you or I'll do this. I'll come back with you like at noon or tomorrow or something like that. And you just end up forgetting because you're like, literally you're getting in contact with hundreds of people. You're shaking hands all day. You can't remember every single person's name. So th this is just a personal preference for me because I end up forgetting a lot when I go to a trade show. I was like, oh, wait, we're supposed to go meet up with him again. And just a lot. So I recommend maybe writing down everything you said you're going to do. And so you actually do it. <laughs> okay. So just to recap that, right? So importance of going to a trade show again, I've found probably half of my suppliers from offline. The other one has been off from online. But if I knew the information I knew today, I probably would simply not go stress too much about finding stuff online or offline. Um, but there's for sure benefits to a, uh, working at a trade show. And also one thing I want to let you know too, is the benefits of going to a trade show as an Amazon seller. Okay. Because most 
Amazon sellers are either doing private labeling, arbitrage, and all that stuff. Um, and not a lot of people are doing selling brand name products like the right way. Now, there are a lot of people you just don't see them. Um, that's where most of the sales are at. However, the odds of someone going to this trade show and is an Amazon seller is first off really, really, really low. Okay, for example, I went to a trade show in, um, what was it, October. It was a toy trade show in Dallas, at, or Texas, somewhere in Texas. I'm pretty sure it was Dallas. And I was literally the only Amazon seller there. And there was like <clears throat> vendors who were buying from Walmart and everything like that, or Walmart was buying from them. But I was literally the only Amazon seller there. So the odds of an Amazon seller signing up for this trade show is very, very low. Okay, and then even if there is Amazon sellers signing up, it's not going to be a lot. Okay, and the odds of them of going finding the same exact vendors and going down the same rabbit hole of working with the same suppliers you and ordering the same stuff is very, very low. So I think it's a huge benefit um, for Amazon sellers for sure. If you're serious about this business, I would say is definitely trade shows can be a huge benefit for that. For example, um, if you were not on this call in the first like one minute, I said I was on a testimonial call with one of our students today who basically hit 3,000 sales within first 40 days of signing up and he basically went through a trade show list. He found a vendor, he ordered some PlayStation products for them and they sold right away. Um, but the odds of, again, an Amazon seller going to that trade show I mean, probably the only people who are Amazon sellers who go to trade or sign up for trade shows are probably the people who watch my YouTube channel, to be very honest. There's not a lot of them, for sure. Um, but yeah, when you're preparing online, just remember to have your business set up and contact a bunch of people, get their products. And yeah, so what I'm going to do now, open up to questions. I have not seen the chat box, but I saw the chat box moving. Um, yeah, uh, it looks like a guy was kind of sending some weird emojis. What's happening, Bulbhead? Okay, he didn't say a lot of stuff. Okay, um, hey, there's Albert. That's kind of funny. I, I, yeah, Albert, I was just talking about you. Um, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, Albert, that was you. Okay, so what I'll do now, um, guys, is open up to Q&A. And what time is it right now? It's 3.47. So I will... Oh, I don't... I hope this wasn't laggy. Sorry if this was laggy. So I will open up to Q&A right now. Um... Yeah, I don't know what this Ray guy is going about. But yeah, guys, feel free to simply ask any questions you have at this point. It does not look like it's laggy, so I'll be on what's 347. I'll be on for the next 13 minutes or so. Um, I'll see if I have any questions, but... Okay, looks like I need to kick out this Ray guy. I don't know what he's doing. A lot of his messages have been attracted. Um, sorry, Ray guy. I don't really like cuss words. Let's see hide this user. No quality is good. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, guys, so if you have any questions about trade shows, feel free to let me know right now. But yeah, only, la only lag twice, so it's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, all right. Uh, make sure this isn't like giving people amnesia. Okay, uh, definitely wear shoe inserts. I promise you, your lower bag, yeah, for sure do that. Um, uh, t -t 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 only lag twice was fine. Do these suppliers ship to Amazon? Um, it depends. I mean, I mean, pretty much like it's. I literally have one supplier that does not ship directly to Amazon, but yeah, they for sure would. Now, if you order products at the trade show, they might not like, like, like they might not have their stuff because when they go to a trade show, they're just gonna bring a thing called a showroom where they basically just have one product of everything they have in stock back at their warehouse. So you'd have to place the order, and then you have to wait for them to get back to the warehouse, and, they, and then they would ship it. We'll post this video to your YouTube channel later. Yeah, so when I, whenever I do live streams, YouTube automatically posts it, I think, like an hour or so later or something like that. How many people do we have on here? We have 101 people watching. Wow, that is a lot of people. So you guys have, must have a lot of questions. Um, what do you say to get them to sell product on Amazon? So... Um, if it's a, like a distributor or like a wholesaler, I mean, they'll allow Amazon sellers. If it's a smaller brand where I know that we had a student, uh, Andrew, who he actually has a YouTube channel, um, Journey Soup. He went to a trade show recently and he basically was kind of going for like smaller brands to get exclusive be like deals with them. And when you're doing that, you just kind of have to come up to them more professional and everything um, because you have to be basically presenting their brand. But if it's just a distributor supplier, which I really preference working with distributors, 
um, and suppliers simply because usually the cost is cheaper and it's a lot easier to get access to them. Um, they always sell to Amazon sellers, but it also depends on the trade show. Um, any advice, I go through your eBay program. Um, just get as many listings as you can up on your eBay account, and that's the best I can give to you. Make sure to keep all your receipts if you go source products from stores, and that's eBay stuff. So. Question business cards. Do they display LSC name or DBA? I, I would do DBA name. DBA for sure. Um, when I formed my company, it described its purpose and general business purpose. Will it be a problem that I didn't describe it as online retail? General business purpose. I mean, if you have a reseller's permit, you're fine. Thanks for always being active, replying to emails. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And I, I need to fix up my like replying to emails thing because there's a thing in our course where you, people can double check our product research. I usually respond to them really, really late at night, but I'm going to try to get that switch to like get my schedule better. What kind of car do you drive? Um, I don't really drive a lot, but I have a uh, Dodge Ch no, Charger. Dodge Charger. I don't even remember. It's like a 2009 Charger. It looks a lot newer and nicer than a 2009. Um, but I have a charger. I, I don't really drive that much. When I was in uh, LA, I literally did not drive. I, well, I didn't even take my car. I just ran everywhere. Uh, what do you find is the minimum order with a new supplier? It totally depends. Um, again, the lowest orders, I have actually, I make orders all the time with the vendors of like 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Um, but I would say, I did a video on this. It was actually, I think it was the last live stream. I did like 25% of the deals would be have an MOQ of like 250 to like 500 bucks. Um, half of the suppliers will have like MOQs of like 1500 bucks or more. And then a small majority will have over 2,500 bucks. Um, but yeah. But I, I did that. I think it was the last live stream or the live stream before. So feel free to check that out. Um, so do they usually work the labeling them or someone else would do it? Um, they'll always do the box labels. The tiny item labels, I recommend doing manufacturer barcode or just pay Amazon to do it. Is it a good time to buy toys or hold off until closer to Easter? <coughs> um, there are for sure some toys that sell kind of all year long, especially like superhero um, toys for sure. That's what I know. It's like I sell a bunch of licensed goods. Um, stuff that's always like on, I would say on TV, on movies, tends to sell all year long until the movie comes out and then it just jacks up like crazy. Um, for example, I was like selling a bunch of like DC comic stuff and then when Justice League, no, it was Justice League. When Justice League came out, it just went crazy. Um, but I would say licensed goods and like superhero stuff tends to sell decently all year long because you have TV shows, you have uh, cartoons, you have movies that are run on like HBO and everything, and then they spike during the holidays. So it depends on the toy, um, but for sure, I think it's decent. I came on a little late. Came on a little late. I can't talk. Where can you find trade shows? Uh, Google trade show and blank. Um, if you have 2K to invest in a product initially, is it better to split your order to three to four products or focus on one or two? I would say one to two just because it's more realistic to get one or two products out of 2,000 besides three to four. But just make sure to thoroughly do the product research. Look on Keepa. Okay. Do you ask companies to email you product lists at trade shows or do they print out available? So they'll do a few things. Um, so um, you guys probably heard of the company Maisto before. I set up a wholesale account with Maisto at the last trade show I went to. And they gave me like a, it wasn't even a thumb drive, it was a wristband that had a USB plug-in. So they'll either give you a USB plug-in, they will give you a catalog, they will email you catalog. Some of them have like technology now where they can just go scan something with your phone and then they will, it get, you automatically get on their email list or something on that. Um, so, but they usually all can do online stuff now. You might find some really old guys who, oh, no, we don't do anything online. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> How would you know which trader to spot on if it would be profitable on Amazon? So is it okay to tell everyone that you're an Amazon seller? Yeah, so I, I mean, when I work with these suppliers, I always tell them I'm an Amazon seller. Depends on the trade show you're at. I've been to trade shows where it's, they're all about brick and mortar and they don't really deal with online. And then I've been to other trade shows where pretty much every single person is willing to work with Amazon sellers. Depends on the trade show. Um, but yeah, how would you know which product is it? I mean, you, it just, if it makes sense on Amazon, if the product research makes sense, then that's when you know it's good. I also use a commercial registered agency for an address, which will be issued since it's not my actual address. I looked at a lot of the ASD exhibitors' website, majority of the products are not popular brands. 
Any advice to find the brand name suppliers? Yeah, so ASD, again, I mentioned this into when I was going over this stuff. It's more of just like a buffet, I guess. You're going to have just every single possible, not every single, but you have a lot of vendors there. And because of that, not a lot of them are very good. So it's kind of finding the needle in the haystack. But ASD, I know there's great people in there. It's just, I mean, there's whatever, 2,500, there might be three or four. That might be pretty, that's a little pretty low estimate, I think, actually. If I want to sell marine products, sorry if I'm skipping a lot of people's questions here. I'm actually going to go through these a little faster. Is a Gmail email bad or accepted? It's accepted. It's fine if you have a Gmail email. Do you right away to tell the Amazon seller? Yeah, I tell them an Amazon seller. Will you need a resale certificate if your state doesn't have sales tax? Um, you need to communicate that with the Department of Revenue, but usually not. New subscriber. Thank you, Harry G. If a brand requires map policy, would you sell it? Yes. Um, what would you need to prove you're allowed to sell brand licensed merchandise and invoice from the supplier? Does UPC barcode cover your product forever? If it, it is needed for private label product to list on Amazon, um, you need a barcode, yeah. Yes, yes, Albert. Are distributors exactly the same as suppliers? Yeah, so when I use the word distributors, um, whenever I use the word suppliers, I either mean like distributors, sometimes manufacturers, wholesalers, middleman, brokers, all the same thing. <laughs> What's your favorite vegetable? Um, zucchini. Hey, would you mind looking at the Facebook master group? I have a product I linked. I just came in. I came across. Uh, I have a question. Um, about it since it has no buy box. Yeah, Connor. So I would actually recommend is to go inside the course. Um, see if I actually get logged in real quick. I don't want people to like see my password and stuff, but, um, but there's a section in the course where you can go fill out product research. Um, let me show that to you real quick. Log in. Hopefully I get logged in right away. Probably will. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to let this load a little bit. But there's going to be a thing down here. What? Um, this thing right here. The product research double check. Let me make this smaller now. Oh. Uh, okay, so... So right here, if you have a product you want me to check, you can just go in here. Make sure you have the information like what the products are and the ASIN and everything like that. And just fill out this information like what's your name, email address, product ASIN, buy box price, um, and all this good stuff. And then I'll be able to go answer that question accurately. Okay. Um, have you bought a lot of pallets deals from closeout suppliers? If they are usually good items, do they? Yeah, invoices usually work for those suppliers for sure. Um, because some suppliers might say they're closeout suppliers, but they're also like just typical normal stock wholesalers. Um, but that's just how they name their company. Um, but yeah, I've bought a lot of pallets from those types of suppliers. Do you have to buy in bulk from authorized suppliers? Well, you're not buying individually, so yes. PSA, not sure if people saw the article on Massachusetts demanding. Yeah, I was actually going to, I was thinking about doing the live stream on this, but I'm going to talk about that Massachusetts thing in another day, but I'm not exactly sure what it means. Is there any benefit to having different business names or storefronts? A lot of people keep their names secretive. I'm wondering why. Um, probably just like privacy, I would say. Thanks for answering my questions. Keep up the great content. It's really great. Thank you, sir. Uh, do you create a listing if you're using the UPC? If I'm selling brand name products, I'm not creating a listing. Um, I went over a video on that, I think. Yeah, um, it's in my video. It's like, how do I not spend any money on pay-per-click ads? That kind of goes over that process. But no, I, I'm not creating listings or anything on those lines. Yeah, no. So if the supplier doesn't ship to Amazon, do you prepare the product yourself? Um, you could either send it to a third party, um, which I've actually never shipped to a third party, or you could ship it to yourself. Um, but again, I have literally one supplier that doesn't ship directly to Amazon. I have no idea why they don't. It like doesn't make like economic sense. <laughs> but yeah, like literally, like I would profit more. They could profit more, but whatever. Um, like thousands of bulk units bulk from these suppliers. I mean, it depends. I mean, it depends on the amount of dollars you're spending, right? So I've bought some like expensive products where I buy fifteen and that's good to go. Um, but yeah, hey, the reseller network here, awesome, Albert. Still can't log in the course. Okay, yeah, Albert, yeah, it's because we switch over the domains. So 
um, I'll get that uh, fixed for you, but make sure to email me as well. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, I'll be on for the next two minutes or so. So feel free to put in your last questions and I will answer them. Um, but if you're watching this on the replay, or I guess if you're watching this right now, what we just went over is basically how to prepare for a trade show as an Amazon seller. Went over the benefits of a trade show and kind of like the benefits of it and why. Because like simply, there's not going to be a lot of Amazon sellers, I'm going to tell you right now, going to trade shows and the odds of that happening, like it's... I mean, there's a lot of benefits to it because that's where suppliers are at. You got to keep in mind is the best suppliers you're going to find is not going to be easy to find. If you just search them on Google, they're probably not going to be good um, because you want to go where they want business. Okay. But yeah, so we just went over how to repair offline and online. This guy's BS. He's, uh, he, I've watched a few of his videos and he clearly doesn't do as many sales as he claims. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Sheep, Reseller Network. All right, guys, so I guess that would be a good way to end the call with Reseller Network. Um, okay, we've got a few, couple more questions going in. How do you prove you're allowed to sell the brands to Amazon? So if you're restricted, if you're gated, you need to go apply an invoice from the supplier, and then you're good to go. So that's, like, the only way. I mean, I guess the legal side of being, like, allowed is simply you're buying from them and have an invoice. So if, like, a brand reaches out and said, hey, I just bought from this supplier and they're good to go. For example, I've like gotten letters from like brands and everything like that. And, and I was like, hey, and I just sent it like, because sometimes you can get a cease and desist letter um, from brands. And usually they like, it's just automatic for them whenever they see a new sale on it. And, but then like what's happened before in the past, I'll get that letter and say, hey, I bought from this supplier. And then like five minutes later, like, oh, okay, never mind, sorry. Um, and then my supplier will get in contact with them and everything's good. But yeah. Um, are there weight limits to have products shipped to Amazon? Uh, no, well, kind of. Um, well, it, it depends on the boxes, right? You can't have like some boxes over 150 pounds. So there's kind of limits, but you can send thousands of units. Um, thank you. Um, sorry, I meant to add my questions in when no one wants to sell a unique item I came across as far that might not be that might be a good lesson to some if you want to take a look at. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Bo. Uh, great. Yep. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, do Hasbro and Mattel have contracts to DC and Marvel characters? I mean, Hasbro and Mattel have the, the license to basically everything. So, yeah. Thank you, Niner Time. Okay, yeah, guys. I will be going off right now. Good talking with you all. Except Reseller Network. She must be upset. Can I use a spar I get from the UK trade show and uh, ASD Amazon? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, haters will hate. I, I actually enjoy people hating more. So, it's good. Okay, adios, guys.